Hi, in this presentation, we are going to be covering creating a CMA using CRMLS Paragon. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the CMA, it stands for Comparative Market Analysis. It's the process of using a subject property to find comparables and taking those comparables and putting them into a one-page report or a multi-page presentation for your client. So I will be going over both options that we do have here in Paragon. But before we get started, here at the very top, you have your navigation bar, which is always here. And this is your CMA button. There are a few different ways to start a CMA. You can start a CMA by simply clicking CMA and hitting Create Presentation. And what that does, that starts the CMA wizard. It gives you step-by-step -step process here on creating that CMA. But you also can do the search method where you find the comparables first. In this process, you have comparables on the second step, which means I would go through the first step here and then perform a search to get my comparables. But in my case, I want to get the comparables first and then add them into a presentation. So that's the method we will be using today. We'll go ahead and close this out. And then another thing I would like to point out, when you do click on CMA, you have the ability to see your saved presentations. There is a CMA preferences wizard. Now this preferences wizard is something that we will go through at the end of the presentation. And the reason why we're going through that at the end of the presentation is just so you can see all of the different pieces of the CMA. And then at that point, you can decide how you would like to proceed with the wizard. Now that preferences wizard is a way for you to set your defaults for the CMA package. And again, if you click on CMA preferences wizard, it will start that wizard and take you step by step on setting up your preferences. This is something that you should do beforehand. But again, I will show it at the end so that you can see all the pieces of the presentation first and then decide on what you would like to change. Also, there's another option called Create an Easy CMA. That is taught in a different class. That is for Paragon Connect. To the right, you have the ability to add a subject property. Remember, when we do a CMA, you're using a subject property and you're finding comps. If that subject property is not in the MLS, you do have to add that information manually. So you can do that beforehand or you can do that in the setup process. And then finally on the CMA button, we have maintain subject properties. By maintaining subject properties, that gives you the ability to edit or make adjustments to any of the subject properties that you have created from here. So there's your CMA button. What I am going to do now is we're going to start by finding our comps, and then we're gonna take those comps and put them into a quick CMA. From that quick CMA, we will then put them into a regular presentation and go through the presentation from there. So by starting with a search, I am going to select the class that my subject property is in, which is residential. Now, there isn't a set way to get comps. This is just a quick and easy way that I teach. So from my residential search, I will click on map search. And from the map search, I am going to enter here the address of my subject property. Now, again, this isn't entering the subject property for your CMA. This is using the subject property to pinpoint the location to find comparables nearby. So the subject property is something that I've entered already. So we'll go ahead and grab it. And you will notice that it was centered in the middle of the map. Now, since it is centered, you wanna be very careful. Do not zoom in or zoom out from here because right now it's directly in the center. If you zoom in or zoom out, it is no longer in the center. Because our next step to the right of where we enter the address is where we will put how many miles we would like to go out. Now, some agents do like to go half a mile, a full mile, completely up to you how far out you would like to go. It also is dependent on the comps or the property that you're entering. So in my case, just to show you that you can use decimal points, I'll do 1.5, and then I will hit the search radius button. Once we hit search radius, you will see that the, the property is in the center of my circle here. And then we have potential comps. I say potential because we have not put in our criteria yet. So I'll go back to criteria. 
and we are now going to enter the criteria based upon my subject property. My subject property is a single family, so I'll do SFR. I don't need a county, city, zip code, or MLS area, and that's because the shape has taken place. Now below that, I do need a status. I already have active and pending just to show my client what's going on in the area. And then we definitely need sold. So I'll grab the closed listings. And remember, since sold is a closed status, it does go back. So what I wanna do is I wanna cap how far it goes back. I can enter a closed date. I can select a date here from the calendar or I can click the date range drop down and I can select a date from this list. I'll start with 90 days, but remember that it is completely up to you how far back you would like to go. Now, I don't need a price. That defeats the purpose. My subject property is a three bedroom, but in that area is mostly four for the same size. So just to make sure I get comps, I would do three to four. Typically, I would do exactly what the subject property has, three bedroom, three bath. And then the subject property has 1,972 square feet. So I will do a range. Again, that range is up to you. I did a little bit below, a little bit above, and I got zero comps. But that's because I did exactly what my subject property has. If I change that three to a four, I now have nine comps. Perfect. Now, completely up to you if you would like to add any other information, but this is good enough here to get my comps, so I will execute the search. And upon executing that search, we get a list of all of our comps. From here, if you would like to give your client just a one-page informational CMA, you can click Reports and CMA. And you can grab the CMA summary, which is your quick CMA or your one page CMA. But remember, if you don't want to use all the comps here, you must select them and hit checked so that it only shows the checked. So maybe I only wanted this active, and then I only wanted two of the pendings here. So I'll grab this one and I'll grab this one, and then I want all the solds. If I were to click reports, and then under CMA, click CMA summary, notice I still get all nine comps. It's broken down by status, so we have the two active, the four pending, and the three sold. You still have the ability to do just the checked by simply hitting checked here in the top left-hand corner, and now it updates to just the comps I selected. And there's your quick CMA, how easy was that? Here we get a breakdown of average, minimum, maximum, and median for the bedrooms, bathrooms, lot size square footage, the living area, days on market, list price, list price per living area, sales price, and sales price per living area. One other thing that you can do here if need be, is you can make customizations to this. If there's fields that you would like to add, you can move your mouse over customize, click fields, and you can add any of the available fields to your form. You can also remove any of the fields that are in bold. If they're grayed out, you can't remove them. They have to stay on the report. Everything else can be removed or reorganized. We can click, hold, drag, put them into a different order. Or again, we can add any extra field. I'm okay with everything that's here, so I will just simply hit save. And there you are, there's my quick CMA. Now, for some of you who would like to add a little bit extra, maybe you want the listing photos or you want a little bit more of a side-by-side -side comparison, you can add another page along with this called the CMA Quick View. So by simply clicking CMA Quick View, there's my Quick View where we get the side-by-side -side comparison of each of the comps here. Really cool, really easy. I can print or email both pages to give my client a quick CMA. Now I will go ahead and hit back. And now we're back to the home page here. 
Now back here on my property system grid, I'm now ready to take these comps and put them into a full presentation. We've already done the quick CMA, but now I wanna put them into a full presentation. So I will click more. And from more, we have an add to CMA button. By clicking add to CMA, it's going to add these comps to a Paragon CMA. You do have quick options here. I have the ability to choose just the selected listings, choose all visible listings, just the current listing, and I also can add them to a new CMA presentation or add the listings to a saved CMA presentation. So I wanna add it to a brand new one. From here, I'll just simply hit select and this starts my wizard. Remember, we just took a look at this, but now step two has a green check mark next to it because we've already done it. We don't have to get the comps on step two because we've done that first. All we have to do is start at step one and go through the rest of the presentation. So the first thing we have here is the presentation name. I will name it Ricky's CMA2. From there, I'll just simply hit continue. And now we're on to subject property. From subject property, at the top, you will always see these buttons here. You're always going to see a save but there is an auto save in play. Every time you move on to the next page, you will automatically get an auto save. If you would still like to hit the save button, you're more than welcome to, and that will save it from your current position. There's also always gonna be a generate presentation button, but you don't wanna do that until you have completed your CMA. So we'll bypass that. And the CMA preferences wizard is what we mentioned here. You always have access to that from here as well. Now below on the subject property, remember I also mentioned that if the subject property was not on the MLS at some point, you do have to create the subject property from scratch. I can hit create new subject property. I will select residential. And then I can just enter the information that I would like to compare. You don't have to enter all of the information here. Just enter the information that you would like to compare. A helpful tip would be doing the tax autofill. So you can autofill that information from the tax records. Now, going back to subject property, once you have created the subject property, you can move forward on to client. Or if you took the chance to go ahead and enter it ahead of time, you can just load the subject property that you've entered. So I did so, I can just select it if I wanted to. Or your third option, if the listing was on the MLS at some point, you can just put in the MLS number and then hit go. That will pull in the information from the MLS record. Really quick and really easy. Now, if we don't wanna use this subject property, we can always delete it. I can email this report. And you also can select the view. Here on the view, we have subject property one and subject property two. It's okay if you change your mind about which report you like better, subject property one or two, you can make that change on step five as well. So for right now, we'll go with subject property one and move on to next. Next here, we have our client. So I can create a new client from scratch or I can select a client from my list. If I hit create new client, we'll just use myself and I'll put in my name. And that's it. If I wanted to do any additional information, I could. So if I wanted to enter the address, we can go ahead and do that. And I'll just enter the address of the subject property. We'll just make it quick. Perfect. And then I'll just simply hit save. So now my contact has been created. Now, once I hit my next button here in the top right-hand corner, we are now on to comparables. Since I have already gotten my comps, there's nothing for me to do here. If I didn't, let's say I clicked on CMA and I hit create presentation from here. On this step, this is where you would have to perform your search to find your comparables. It is the exact same search that we did earlier today. It is just done in a different step process. Now, what I could do here since I already have my comps is I can delete any of these that I don't want by hitting remove 
or I can email them, or I can add new comps by clicking add, or go back to the search results and I can pull up some of the old ones from my search. But again, I am okay with these comps that I have here, so I will hit next. Now on step three, step three is the adjustments. You are not required to do adjustments. One of the big reasons is there's no set guideline to tell you how much any feature is worth. So how much is a bedroom worth or how much is a bathroom worth? You're using your own realtor knowledge to come up with a price. So for example, if I change this from numeric to features, here are all the different features that you can add to the selected and you can compare to your comparable properties. I've created some ahead of time. I added parking garage and spa and bath, and I gave it a value. Now, I'm not sure if that is the actual value. These are made up numbers that I created just for presentation purposes. So we gave a spa a $5,000 value. Now, with a calculated adjustment, it automatically makes those calculations based upon what the comparable property has. So if the comparable property does not have a spa, then the system will add 5,000 to that comparable property. So it's like they're adding a spa. And if you don't wanna do the calculated adjustments, you like to do manual adjustments, right under calculated adjustments, we have adjustments. From here, you get a side-by-side -side view of each individual comp. We're on comp one, but we can click next to move on to the next one. So from here, we're gonna look at my subject property and my comparable property. Now on my subject property is a three bedroom, this is a four. I have more living area than they do, so it's completely up to you how you would like to make this adjustment. Let's just pretend they had a little bit more living area than I do, or the exact same. I can make the adjustment on the bedroom. But again, there is no set guideline to tell you how much a bedroom or bathroom is worth. So using my own method, I'm going to make up a number. And here, I would say a bedroom is worth 15,000. Since the comparable property has more than I have, I have to take away from the comparable property. So it's almost like we're taking away a bedroom. I will do negative 15,000. And it hasn't changed yet, but you look here at the adjusted price, this property is 1.6 million. Whenever I click off of that particular field, it made the adjustment. Now the adjustment is 1.585. Okay, so it took away 15,000 from the original price. Now let's move on to the next comp. Let's just pretend that this one has less. So what I would have to do is I would have to add that amount. I would do just 15,000. And you see it made the adjustment from 1.67 to 1.68. Really simple, really easy if you would like to do it. It's completely up to you. Remember, there is no set guideline. So I will remove that for now. Let's go ahead and do this. Just so you all are able to see the adjustments on the adjustments page, I'll go ahead and make just one or two adjustments. Again, you're more than welcome to bypass this by simply hitting next. Now our next step is the page layout. From the page layout, there's a few different themes here, about six. You can click on the theme that you want. You can go with modern, vivid, traditional, elegant, contemporary, or basic. If you would like to see how your report looks so far, you can hit preview. And this is what it looks like. Not bad. Let's hit close. So I have my theme. We'll hit next. And now we are on to footer. So here on the footer, when you all come here, it will be blank like so. It's up to you to say, yes, you would like to use a footer and then enter your footer text, whatever you like. I just entered something as an example. Then you choose the alignment, if you would like it aligned to the left, the center or the right. And then decide if you would like your logo and your picture to display. 
On step three, if you choose just one of these photos, on step four, you have to decide, will the text be aligned to the left or to the right side of the photo? Since I selected both, step four doesn't matter. So we'll move on to our next step, which is the disclaimer. Both disclaimers are the same, so it's up to you if you want a disclaimer or no. I do, so I will move on to my next step, which is presentation setup. Now, if this starts to get clogged a little bit, each label can be collapsed. So I can collapse step one, step three, and four. Now, here on step five, we are looking at all the pages that will be in my presentation. If it doesn't have a checkbox next to it, it will not be in my presentation, but I can check them and uncheck them as I please. You also can click, hold, drag, and put them into any order. So if you would like a different order, you're more than welcome to do so. Now, starting with cover page, so far my cover page has who is prepared for, who is prepared by. We have a title of the presentation. I'll call it CMA presentation for Ricky. We can enter comments. Whatever you like to say here, for the sake of the presentation, I just enter something. And then you choose your page type. Do you want subject property or agent centric? Also, do you want to show your photo and logo? So I'll say yes to both. And we will hit preview. This is if you do subject property. Your subject property will be right here on the front page. If you choose to do agent centric, when we hit preview, there's no photo, just your contact information. So completely up to you which report style or page style you want. From cover page, we'll move on to cover letter. Here on cover letter, you can give it a title, enter the recipient's information, and you can type up your cover letter. Now, if you don't want to type up your cover letter, the system has actually provided a cover letter for you. In the top right hand corner, you have MLS documents. If you click on MLS documents and then from MLS documents, you click on training documents. Inside of the training documents folder, you will find two CMA reports that you can copy and paste into your report. Now, the trick to this is. All you have to do is click on CMA cover letter and save it as a PDF. That will allow you to copy and paste the data into your report. Same thing with CMA final comments. I'll save it as a PDF and then I will copy and paste it. Now going back to my CMA, there's my cover letter and here are the final comments. Once I have saved as a PDF, I can copy and paste it here and there's my cover letter. Really simple. Also, as a note, you can have up to three cover letters at once. So I have my first cover letter. If I go to cover letter two, this is blank. So if I want to have a different cover letter for this presentation, I can just enter whatever I want for this particular cover letter. But I'll go with the original and we will move on to the next step agent resume. For my agent resume, for an example, I just put the CRMLS logo and let everybody know that I'm great, okay? Completely up to you what you would like to put here. If you don't want to enter a resume, just uncheck the report and the report will not be displayed. Just like the cover letter, you have up to three different resumes. So you can change the resume based upon the CMA that you're doing. The next step is company info. We don't have access to that. That is done by the broker. So I will bypass that and go straight to subject property detail. Here on subject property detail, this is where we can change our mind. Remember earlier when we entered the subject property, we had subject property one and two. If I don't want to use subject property one anymore, I can go to subject property two. And then if you would like to see what that report looks like, all you have to do is click on preview page and here's subject property too. Now, since I'm okay with that, I will move forward to summary of adjustments. Currently this report is selected, but if you didn't do adjustments on the adjustment page, 
this report will be grayed out because there's nothing to show. But now since I did make changes, I can decide if I wanna show it or not, it's my choice. Here are the adjustments I made. I made adjustments on two different properties and it shows the actual adjustment. After the adjustment, we have comparable report horizontal and comparable report vertical. You can see that I only chose one and that's because they're pretty much the same report, just a different layout. One is horizontal and the other one is vertical. On both reports, you get to decide if the subject property is visible. So I can say, don't display the subject property, only display it on the first page or display it on every page. I can also display class summary stats just by keeping this box checked. One other thing you can do here if you'd like to is you can customize the CMA field preferences. Just like we did in the CMA summary, we can click here we can remove anything we don't want and add anything we do want. I think a good idea would be previewing the page first to see what it looks like and then deciding if you would like to add or remove anything. So here on the horizontal, we have the subject property plus two comps per page. Now that's the difference in the vertical report. If we go to vertical, we have the same options, the display options and the customize options. But when you look at the report, it's the subject property plus three comps per page. So there you are. Now, again, you get to decide which report you like. I said I wanted to go with vertical. Now we're moving on to the CMA summary. This CMA summary is what we seen earlier when we did the quick CMA. So if I hit preview, there is my CMA summary. It's also part of the full presentation. Next, we have the comparable property statistics. Here on the comparable property statistics, this is a chart that you can create. I always recommend previewing it first to see what it looks like before you make any edits. So this is going to show each of my comps. The first one will be the active properties. We only had one. Here are the two pending properties. And here are the three sold properties. The sold properties does have an extra column because it's showing the sold price versus the list price. And then sold property data here at the bottom. So based on this, I can go back to the presentation and I can make adjustments. I do want to continue to see the X and Y axis. I don't want minor grid lines. I think the major grid lines are fine. Again, that's my choice. And then when we have, or we come to the colors, you can click on the color and you can enter the RGB code if you know it, or we can just click, hold and drag and go through the colors this way. I am going to do my Padre yellow and we're going to make this Padre colors. So I hit apply and then close. Now I have my brown and yellow. Pretty cool, right? Last thing I wanna point out is you have the transparency here. When it's set at 60, you can see through it, but the higher you go, which the max is 100, the darker it will be. So you see my lines, we can't see through those anymore. They're completely solid. And if I were to go back to a lower transparency, now we can see through the lines. So I like the darker better. My printer may not, but I do. <laughs> so we'll go with 100. And then I will hit next. Next, we have the comparable price analysis. This is also a chart. But first, you have to choose the price based on the comparable low, high, average, or median, or the adjusted high, low, average, or median, or you can manually enter it. So I'll do just a made up number here. And there we are, there's my suggested list price. I can also click here to customize the chart. So just like we did in the other one, 
you can change the colors here. I'll just change them really quickly just to show you. Let's just do that purple, or we can change the yellow, the green, change, change the transparency. Actually, I'll just leave it like that, and we'll hit close. Now, when I hit preview, there we are. There's my chart breakdown. We have the low, average, high, and what my subject property is priced at. Really simple. Next step is the net sheet. So if you did want to do the net sheet, it's here. I didn't want to do it, so I unchecked it. But you can fill out the net sheet. You're just responsible for adding all of the different estimated closings. Next, we have a map. This map is going to show my subject property and where all the properties are that we compared the subject property to. So if you would like to keep the map, we'll keep that checked. And then last but not least, when it comes to the reports that are tied to the CMA, we have final comments. This was the one that we went to MLS documents. Then we went to training documents and we selected CMA final comments. Again, you can copy and paste that, or you can type up your own final comments. Every other report you see here is a PDF. So right here, we have determining value. These PDFs don't change. That's why I said this is the last one that is tied to the CMA. Everything here is, again, just a PDF with information. So the value of using a real estate professional your marketing planner, what to do to maximize first impressions, showings in open houses, selling versus timing, intelligent pricing, where the dollars go, and a moving checklist. So I'm selecting all of those first, and then we'll click on them so you can see what they look like. There you are really easy, and it's completely up to you if this is a report that you would like to have in your presentation. Last but not least, you have the ability to upload a document. So if I have a document from another presentation that I would like to add to my presentation, you can upload that PDF here, but just remember that PDF will only be available for this presentation. So I'll hit next. And now we're on to step six, which is view presentation. So from here, we do have to generate the presentation. We have to change it from HTML to a PDF. So you just simply hit start and it starts to generate the CMA. You can still move about the system if you like to, as long as you do not close the CMA tab, it will continue to run. Okay, so we'll let that convert. And here it is, here's my report. It came out to 26 pages. Now from here, if you like to, you still can save it, but the auto save is in effect. I can email it from here, but if I wanted to print it or download it or save it, you have to use the PDF tool. This one will start the presentation mode. This will open the file. This will allow you to print. This will allow you to download. And this one will allow you to open a copy in a new window. There you are, really simple. So again, as we scroll down, here is my CMA report. Really easy, right? All 26 pages. So we'll go through that really quickly. Just going through showing you some of the pages that you have. And there's your CMA. So now if I were to close this out, let's close out all the buttons that we had open. To get back to that CMA, I can just simply click on the CMA button and go to save presentations. You notice that I did not save it, but here it is, Ricky CMA2. By clicking on it, it pulls up that same CMA. And if I need to make changes, I can do so here. One thing I would like to point out is it will kick out the CMA after 12 months. So 12 months of not making changes to the CMA will have the CMA booted from the system. You can add a new CMA from here, delete it, or copy a 
an existing CMA. If you click the add button, that is just like clicking on CMA and hitting create presentation. It starts the CMA wizard and you have to still get your comps on step two. Really easy. Now, the last thing I wanna show you is in that CMA, we have that CMA preferences wizard. You also have access to that preferences wizard by going to preferences and under system, you have CMA preferences wizard. Both are the exact same. It is 14 pages of your own default. So when I click start, here's my cover letter. This is how I can enter multiple cover letters and have them all available. Next, we have my resume, same location. We can do up to three different resumes. Now, important step, you want to do this in your preferences and not in the CMA setup, because if you do it in the CMA setup only, it's only for that CMA. By doing it in the preferences, it's available for every CMA. Remember company information you won't have access to that's done by the broker. Subject property one or subject property two can be your default. You can still change that in the process as we were able to see. The comparable report horizontal, you can make those default changes here. You can customize the fields or change where the subject property is displayed. Same thing with the vertical. Next step, we have CMA summary. So you can change the field preferences on that CMA summary, which was that quick CMA that we did. Here on the comparable property statistics, by default, I still have that pink, but I wanted to go with my Padre colors. So we'll go ahead and make it Padre yellow. And just pretend I did a good job. And there it is, there's my default. Next, I can enter defaults for the net sheet. Once I hit next, here are the final comments. So remember, you can copy and paste that. It is available in the MLS documents. Then we also have the ability to choose a default theme. Remember, you can choose a default, but you also can change it on a case-by-case -case basis. You can set your footer by default. And then last but not least, you can choose your disclaimer by default. Once I hit next, congratulations, we are done. Now that's if you want to complete your preferences from the wizard. But if you just wanted to edit one piece of the preferences, you still have to go to the preferences here under the wrench and screwdriver. And then under the preferences label, you have CMA. Everything that we did in the preferences wizard is available here. Just remember, some of these don't have edit options. So cover page, there's no edit option. Cover letter, we can do the cover letter, the resume, company info is done by the broker. We can choose which subject property detail is there by default. We can do our summary of adjustments, not from this page, but we can do the calculated adjustments below. You can do your horizontal report or your vertical. CMA summary allows you here to make changes to the field preferences. There's no option for the comparable property stats or the price analysis. There's nothing we can change for the net sheet or the map, but on final comments, we can copy and paste the final comments. Remember the rest of the pages here are PDFs, so there's no changes to be made, but you also can choose your default reports. Which reports do I always want to be selected in my presentation? So I will go ahead and just add these just to make sure they're always available. And then finally here, you can upload a document or documents that you would like to be visible on all of your CMA reports. If you do it in the setup process, it's just for that report, but if you would like it to be available for all, you add it here. Now I'm gonna collapse that label where it says presentation setup, Next, we have page layout. You can choose your default theme, your footer, 
and your disclaimer. Remember a moment ago I said lower, we can make the adjustments. So you can do adjustments by default, or you can add calculated adjustments like you seen that I did earlier. And then last but not least, we have report set up. These are different reports where you can change the field preferences. There you are. Each one has a fields preferences section where you can choose the fields that are displayed on that report. And there it is. That is creating a CMA using CRMLS Paragon. Thank you.